No one can clearly foresee the city of the future. You, you've got to tell us before we look at this video, what is an internet? I can now access the internet too, right? Everything here is immediately followed by sarcastic comments and nasty responses. Hello, Here's a peek through a future window of the world. Apparently in AD 2000, we should be having a hair-raising time. This is a Fox News alert. Today we'll show you the growing power of the Internet. Did you know it was dangerous? All the talk about a doomsday is a big hoax. Don't worry about 2012 and enjoy 2013 when it comes. In horrible weather, I sneeze and I just lose the puppets. I'm thinking Governor Romney won't do that, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big hand to our host, Ula Alvarsson! Hello and good morning, everyone. So fantastic to be back here at the Circus in Stockholm. Uh, we are going to have two wonderful days together, and there's a lot of things that are going to go on here and on the other stages. So, uh, hi, Mats. How to suck the juice out of Syme. For you newbies, uh, there are some tricks, and if you know them, you get even more out of Syme. And for the ones that have been here ever since it started, back in this very room, 95, 96, uh, you, know, you know what to do. So one of the things we're going to do, we're going to be here. We're going to be on main stage with phenomenal speakers from, speakers from all over the world. We're going to explore digital opportunities in many dimensions. Uh, we're also going to go into deep dives or workshops. And here we've asked thought leaders, teachers, business leaders, uh, and other experts to share knowledge about a topic. The ones of you that have workshop passes, please make sure that you've registered and that you go to your workshops. Magically, this wall will come away, and there will be workshop arenas uh, being uh, inside here, up here, uh, and also at Hasselbacken. You will also uh, have the chance to go to Syme Investor Summit. If you're a fantastic investor, a startup, or uh, an entrepreneur with a great company, or a corporate development professional, please apply if you haven't done that. There's still an ability to get a seat if you're the right company or person. For the third year, we also have Syme Nonprofit Summit. And Syme Nonprofit Summit is something that we're very uh, proud to be able to do because we can invite 200 of the most wonderful organizations, people that are caring and helping people every day when they go to work and they just do such wonderful things. So if there's anybody here that wants to connect with the nonprofit community, you have the chance of your life to meet interesting companies that are doing great things that you can connect with and do more things. Uh, if you're also into jogging and contributing, we're going to have, you're going to see running machines being posted uh, around Syme. And for every meter you or anybody else in the room runs, Puff has been kind enough to donate money to uh, uh, the causes at hand. So please, you know, run at least a couple of meters and we'll see how many marathons we can create here and how much value we can create uh, for, for uh, the nonprofit sector. Uh, we're also uh, having iSettle, that you saw dominated the stage last year here. If you see people from iSettle, they are uh, collecting for a very nice course. And you can also get these cool bracelets, Fuck Cancer, which is uh, a phenomenal uh, nonprofit fighting cancer. So you can contribute through iSettle. Another thing we want you to do is to leak what you think. A great leader said, uh, always be conscious that you leak what you think. So if I leak enthusiasm or, or excitement right now, that's exactly what I'm thinking. But I want you to leak what you're thinking as well. And you can do that in many channels. You can uh, go in and you can tweet, you can SMS questions, uh, you can see what's going on on the screens and engage in the conversation. Um, 
you can also go to uh, our Google Hangout. So there are going to be continuous Google Hangouts. And for those of you that haven't tried, you should go up there or you should connect to one, one of the Hangouts. So we're going to have the speakers doing cool stuff there as well. As well as on Syme Live with Rick Edgatarski. So if you go to syme.nu slash live, you can have that important business meeting and still sort of keep track of what's happening here on stage. Um, you also have your workshops. That's in the program. Uh, and that's kind of almost everything we need to do on housekeeping. Uh, the mobile app, you can download that and you can actually matchmake. And this is kind of how matchmaking can, can, can look at Syme. Um, Oh, Mahesh. Hey, welcome, Mahesh. So Morning. what Mahesh is doing here, it's, it's a little note to all your speakers. This is what it used to look like. If you speak too long and you see a handsome young Indian saying Rolex, that means you've overextended your hospitality. But now uh, we're taking that to the next level uh, because one of the themes of these events is that we need to get a little bit more rock and roll. So if you hear this when you're a speaker... <laughs> That means you probably have spoken a little bit too long, and that's Yuhiyo. I don't know, how many of you know Yuhiyo? Raise a hand. Not so many, okay. Yuhiyo is 17 years old. He's from Sundsvall. He's been beaten up and bullied for looking like a girl. So he sat down and thought, okay, if you look like a girl and you're from Sundsvall, should you stay here or explore other markets? So he looked at the globe and said, maybe in Japan they'll like me. And he went there, reinvented himself as a manga girl, and he's now like, topping all the charts in Japan. And he's extremely cool, and he's coming here tomorrow to discuss being authentic, being real, and sort of finding a market that likes you instead of, of, of suffering from one that doesn't. Uh, we're also going to have matchmaking going on. So, uh, and it's a wonderful gift. It's all of you that can connect to all of you. Uh, so that's something that we'll hope that you'll do a lot of during these days. We're also going to have a, a team of, of hand-picked bloggers interviewing and writing about different themes that you can follow so that you have summaries. And new for this year is that you can, during the days, suggest a topic and suggest a speaker. So we're going to try to crowdsource a panel with things that we have missed because it's quite difficult to design a program like this. We've also had the unfortunate that six of the top women speakers that we have invited have canceled the last two weeks. So if there's strong female speakers in, in the audience that we have missed, please make yourself known and the stage will be yours. Um, so I always start these two days with, with sort of a journey in digital opportunities and trying to sort of highlight some of the interesting things that are happening. And I think that uh, the outlook, if you look at most things, it doesn't look really good. If you read the papers, most industries have trouble. Most currencies have trouble. Most European communities have trouble. Uh, at the same time, when you work with digital opportunities, you don't feel that much of it. I mean, there's trouble with some stock exchange uh, valuations of large social networks or, or, or apples or, or others. But if you look at the fundamental drivers, it looks really, really exciting. And that's why we choose the theme, the future is back on track, because we really believe that for companies and industries that embrace digital, uh, there's a lot of interesting things ahead of us. And since I started in this industry too many years ago, it's never been more exciting. And we have mind-boggling digital opportunities. 
I, I think this, this photo is kind of how, how digital industry is looking. They're not looking back and things seem to crumble behind it, but they're so busy running so they don't have time, time looking back. Um, so we're going to start out today by looking at some of the architects of the future. We're going to look at what Google is doing, what Microsoft is doing, what Facebook is doing, how they're trying to build the foundations of the digital world. And Facebook is only eight years old, but it's really uh, become part of the fabric of, of our everyday life, like almost no other service. One sixth of the planet is a member of Facebook, and they go there very, very often. We spoke about the Trojan horse last year, the like button. You push it, but at the same time you share information about yourself and who you are. And this is building out to a timeline, making us the first generation that will have a complete diary of our complete lives. All the photos that we took, all the songs that we listened to, all the places we went to, and of course, completely new marketing opportunities. Facebook is also being a starting point for more and more services around the world and, and uh, eating into more and more sectors of the internet. Just as a point of reference, Facebook is already more valuable than companies like, like Dell or Amazon or HP or Starbucks or, or, or uh, many of our old traditional companies. Eight years old. And of course, they're going into search. And what would the search look like when it's social, when, it's, when it knows your friends, when it knows what you like? Could that be a much more powerful search than some other search players? So what is Google doing? We're also going to meet Richard Steiber, one of my favorite speakers that, that is always welcome on, on Simon's stage. And he sits in the minds of Silicon Valley just together with Larry and Sergey, trying to figure out uh, what, what, what the next step is. They're getting $30 billion just in ad revenues. And mobile ads is just going through the roof, much faster than anybody thought, much more powerful than anybody thought. They're also going into social in a big way with Google+, Plus, uh, and they're making social the core rather than search. So I will probably have a very different search than many of you. And that poses some interesting question. Who owns the right to search for a cheap restaurant in Greece? Is it me? Is it Google? Is it somebody who has my social graph? And it's quite interesting how search will evolve. So I'll, I'll make sure to ask Rickard. Uh, one of my favorite things with Google is Google Hangouts. I don't know if you tried it, but now you can become your own Oprah Winfrey. You just start a Google Hangout. This is at Google's office. And then you invite whoever you want to talk to. And then you have a little TV show and you can post it on YouTube. And then any, anybody can see it. And we're going to do that continuously. So it will happen live, but you can also see it afterwards. And they're also getting into the fashion industry, our friends at Google, now with uh, digital glasses that can add a layer to the experience of looking at physical things. Um, for a long time, it's been think mobile first, and we're going to hear much more about that during the day. So what are some of the older kids doing, the guys that are not eight years old? Well, I think that Microsoft is taking a big, big bet on making Google, uh, making, Google making Windows cool again. Uh, and there's a lot of things happening. Uh, the launch is combining what we do as individuals, but also what we do as companies in an integrated way on all platforms with a lot of entertainment and a lot of other features uh, that we haven't seen before. There's going to be 39 launches, if I calculate them right, until June next year. So we're going to see a completely different ecosystem being presented. They're also launching tablets. Uh, but this technology is very promising. Speech. And we hope in a few years that we'll be able to break down the language barriers between people. So it's just fantastic how technology is going to change the way we look upon things and how things look upon us. Because one thing they're playing around with as well is they're adding emotions to connect. So when you look at your connect, it could actually tell if you're happy, if you're sad, uh, what ad you would like to see. And we're going to integrate with computers in completely new ways with the Connect interface. After having bought Skype, they're also integrating the Skype experience into more and more enterprise solutions. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to, to, to see what happens with that. Apple, 
they're also developing, even though uh, they had a hard time for the first time in, in, in the stock exchange in a long time, uh, they have their bravado, and I like this, iPhone 5, the biggest thing to happen to iPhone uh, since iPhone. Um, they're also defining new categories with the mini iPad, and they're uh, making sort of next generation apps. This is uh, Angry Birds Star Wars. I, I, I'm just so impressed how much can be squeezed out of somebody throwing an angry bird at a pig. Now it's a two and a half hour motion picture. There's stores all over China and now a partnership with Star Wars. But the cool thing uh, with, with sort of the combination of, of, of apps and tablets and things that all of these companies are building is that they're empowering new kinds of dreams. The ones that saw Puck here last year, the now 12 year old that is on his third company that made 110,000 euros on apps that taught other kids how to do their homework better last year. He couldn't have done that before. So there's a lot of interesting things happening when, when the platforms and ecosystems get more accessible. Another trend that we picked up is that Apple bashing is becoming a little bit fashionable. Up until sort of a year ago or something, you couldn't say anything negative about Apple, but now it's kind of trendy to, to, to make a comment about the maps or something like that. We'll see what happens with that as well. We're also going to have some big comebacks. We have Justin Timberlake spearheading MySpace and having a take on how to go after Facebook and change social networking. Uh, we have a lot of things happening with Yahoo, especially since Google exec Marissa Myers took the helm uh, some time ago, and we're going to hear more about that later on today as well. Uh, and Nokia, they have been a comeback kid before. I don't know if you know, but Nokia was on the verge of bankruptcy in 1991. The CEO committed suicide and there was no way of saving the company. Then Jorma Olil and his team came in, and they took the company 27,000% on the stock exchange during the 90s, reinventing themselves completely. And sometimes when companies are reinventing themselves, that's not what you see in the media. So you saw what the, now you see in the media, their mistakes they did three years ago. So it's going to be interesting to follow as well. All of this boils down to that when we have all these ecosystems, when we'll be able to communicate with each other, we have cloud computing, we have access to technology, there's going to be hyper innovation. We're going to see much more innovation that, than we've seen before. And I kind of like to see it as the music industry. Before, I had to train to play the guitar for 10 years, and you had to be in the room. Then some smart guy invented recording music, and all of a sudden Elvis Presley came, and there was a big industry being created. Now, uh, when somebody then enabled anybody to make music, not only talented people like I Awake up here, my favorite DJ, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the music that is being produ produced is in abundance. And I think the same thing will happen. There will be too many songs, there will be too many innovations. So the innovation game will be about spotting and amplifying in innovations, not about coming up with them yourself. This will, of course, transform industry after industry. And we're, we're starting to see five stages of digital transformation. The first one is denial. It's not going to happen to our industries. The new guys are too small. This is not going to work. The second one is anger. We've got to sue Napster. We've got to sue uh, Pirate Bay. We've got to sue somebody. Who can we sue? Let's make this more difficult to get into this industry. And after a while, the industries need to coexist with these new fast-growing digital takes on their own industry. And after a while, they're accepting they're not going to go away. We need to start addressing the issues and maybe embrace them. And in the end, hopefully, you'll reach reinvention. This is how the music industry developed. Denial. No, everybody wants to have their vinyls and CDs. We're never going to leave that. We love the product. Anger. Let's sue everybody. Coexistence. Well, there's okay that there's e-commerce. It's just another store. It's like mail order, but electronic. And then, uh, together with Spotify, they're now making more money than ever before and having the time of their life in a completely reinvented music industry, which can give more songs to more people, cheaper in a more efficient way, uh, and it's much better to be in the music industry. Um, some other industries are further, sort of, uh, further away from reinvention. If you talk to book people, they always say, yes, but we love the books, and the books will always be central, sort of in the living room and in the bookshelf and so forth. Exactly what was said about vinyls before. And there are other industries that are not just seeing the opportunities at hand uh, the way we think they should. So retail, what's going to happen with retail? I think, first of all, it's going to be very hard to just be a store anymore. 
if you travel around smaller cities in the US, it's just renting on every place where there used to be a little mom and pop shop before. That doesn't necessarily mean they're out of business. It could be that they're making better business on e-commerce or on other channels. Um, retail is also transforming and experimenting in many new ways. And I think that we will see retail walls hitting the market, if not next year, at least the year after, where you just have a wall and you just photograph them. These are experiments you've probably seen. I think they will come in big time so that you will have just walls you photograph. That will be a completely new aspect of retail. The stores where you shop will know who you are and be able to teleport you back into the store in a way that they couldn't before. Uh, and you have new tools. I mean, I think iSettle is something that, that really empowers small companies to charge. Uh, we're all, they're also working extensively, extensively with the nonprofit sector. And I mean, when I go to my chiropractic partition, I pay with iSettle. And it's just a cool way of making the cash register something that is easily accessible. But it also connects a relationship that can be developed in new and interesting ways. So what's happening with television? That's something else we're going to look at. And one of the hottest startups from the region, uh, or maybe the one, is Magin. And Magin, once you see Magin, it will completely change the way you look at television. And they say, television as if it was invented today. How would you invent it? Would you have a lot of boxes and cables? Or with everything we have, how would you want television to look? So what they're enabling, they're enabling you to look at all the channels, everything that has been the last two weeks, and just go back and forth on any device, on your TV, on your mobile phone. And when you see it, uh, I think you'll change your view uh, on what your TV viewing will be looking like in the future. And we're also having a bunch of movie-related services. Filmnet is coming out, Netflix is coming. There's so many things happening in the space of film content. Uh, I said that books are in the painful middle phase. Uh, on one end, conceivably, every kid in the world could have the best study material in the world. What will happen in a world like that when all kids get a good ed education? On the other hand, it's not necessarily the bookstores of old that are going to sell all these things. There are a lot of new models being, being developed. This is renting your study books. It's a community that rents study books for university for each other. Uh, and the book and the dead tree is being separated quite dramatically. I mentioned the music business, uh, and when we were having the first time London, an executive from, from uh, Universal said that maybe Spotify doesn't hurt music sales, whereas coming from Sweden, it's a no-brainer. Today, if you're the CEO of Universal, streaming is 89% of your music sales, and most of that is Spotify, a company that didn't exist in a sort of big way or in a meaningful way five years ago for the record companies, is now the bulk of their total revenues. And they love it, because they can go in and see, in Karlstad, how many listen to Lady Gaga right now? And did they like it, and did they share it with their friends or not? It's a completely new platform. And I think that's a good metaphor for a lot of you other industries that have not yet gotten hit by digital or embraced digital enough. How will this look for your industry once it's fully developed? We see something else that is also exciting, uh, the separation of the item and the value. Before we had gold coins, now we have some strange numbers in a bank account. We're seeing that happening in more and more things. So, uh, for instance, music is not connected to the item anymore. Uh, we're seeing that software is not connected to the floppy disk anymore. It's a service that you're providing. And if you take that even further, you're seeing that in more and more cities you don't own a car, you have the right to use a car. So the right of usage becomes more and more exciting. The uh, Wired uh, chief editor calls it the era of creators. He believes that 3D printing will be the next big thing, and we will be able to, to create, just like we now can create music, even if we're not talented, we'll be able to create products. This is a 3D printer, and this is Procter & Gamble's Yes. Huh? And this is just printed at home. So instead of shipping these all around the world, you can just tell your printer to print the Yes bottle and you can refill it. And you can also tell it to put the Yes fluid inside of it and print a sticker with Ola's liquid detergent. Where's that going to go? There's also a 3D printer that can print a gun that you can fire with. What happens with that? Who 
is the gun, who, who, who is the weapon uh, smuggler? Is it Telia or is it the guy who wrote the algorithm or the guy that sort of put the material in the printer? There's also a 3D printer, just to make it more confusing, that can print a 3D printer. What's, what's going to happen with that? These things really are starting to work. And for $2,000, you can start printing things at home. And one of the sort of the top sellers uh, is printing toys for the kids. They just print a new toy when they want a toy. We're also the last generation growing up in a dumb society. And uh, I thought a lot about Hans, er uh, Hans Vestberg, uh, the CEO of Ericsson's speech in London, where he started up by saying, take a deep breath. It's never going to go. The development is never going to go as slow as it is today for the rest of your lives. It's quite interesting. They, they think that 50 billion connected devices will enable everything around us to communicate. 50 billion connected devices, everything will have intelligence, memory, eternity. We're going to have a billion more people joining the party, at least. Soon two billion more people, tripling the total market of internet users. And we're going to have big data. And big data is just in its simplest form. I have the flu. I go to the doctor. He can see where my mobile phone has been. He sends an SMS to everybody who's been close. Check if you have the flu. I mean, very simple things with big data. Uh, what is a bank 10 years from now? Maybe it's a data company. And who's going to manage all these 50 billion connections? So I think that data is going to be one of the, the, the really, really interesting things to follow. We speak about the Internet of Things. I think it should be the Internet of Everything, because I think more things will have connectivity than not. It's going to be more like electricity than like some router somewhere that is very internet-y. Um, and there are three drivers of, of, of the network society. One of them is cloud computing. Anybody has access to computational power anywhere at very low cost. <clears throat> Mobility, you can bring it with you, and better broadband. And if you apply these three things to an industry, for instance, Spotify, they made music mobile, they've, you, they're using the cloud, and the fact that we have very good broadband makes it a fantastic service. Uh, and we're actually going to have a surprise speaker coming in tomorrow afternoon. It is Daniel Ek from Spotify. So we're going to have the chance to see how they're building Spotify and how they're really developing this further. And I've always wanted to have Daniel here, so I'm very happy that he's joining us. So, uh, what we are going to do the next couple of days is reimagining a lot of things, rethinking a lot of things that we're doing on a daily basis or how we look upon industries and opportunities. We're going to maybe reimagine cars, where this is the Google car. I'll ask Rickett about that as well. Getting 1.6 billion impressions per day. It won't be able to hit other things, so you won't have car crashes. It won't be able to sit in a, in a traffic jam because it knows where everything is. So no crashes, no traffic jams, working all the way to, to the job. And when you're at work, it will drive around being a black cab, uh, driving other people around. Or why not recharging the electricity grid, giving back all the electricity it, uh, it, it, it got during the night. Um, this is the strangest app I saw. I don't have a good context for it, except that it's strange. It's something that it's a chip that you insert if you're a woman, and you can see exactly on the second when you're fertile and when you're not. And it was developed as a fertility app. But now it's also uh, sort of potentially being the contraceptive of the future because you can't become pregnant or you can become pregnant and it's very digital. Uh, so things are starting to interact between our bodies and technology in a very, very strange way. And I had a beautiful conversation with, uh, with Electrolux, with, with uh, Anton, who's heading up innovation for Electrolux. And he said, Everybody uses the fridge as an example of the connected future. So the fridge can then order the pizza or whatever. We're building the fridge. We're not building any pizza ordering functions. We're not building anything of that right now. So, what, so if you look at our things, we're in 40 million homes. As an app store, what apps would you build on top of our things? So what do you want your frying pan to be able to do? Or your bathroom, or your, your stove? Could you cook better because you have the right apps for your stove. And when you start playing around with that, it turned into a fantastic session where Electrolux became an app store, and we needed to include a lot of more people in the, in, in the discussions. 
So at four o'clock tomorrow, at four o'clock tomorrow, we're going to invite all of you that wants to build the kitchen of the future together with the innovation team of Electrolux and a glass of champagne and just go crazy in trying to create all these apps. So make a note of coming there if you're interested. Um, also very strange things. This is somebody who's creating a digital date, be it a man or a woman, and you can have a date, you can have a walk in the park, a dinner, a conversation, or something else. And I think that's sort of, the, this is the, the loneliest thing I've seen in my life, yeah. is a, a, a digital companion. And if you ever see me with one of them, please feel free to shoot me. Okay. Some of the things I think that tomorrow's leaders will have, those are themes that you will see underlying a lot of the, a lot of the presenters. One of them is authenticity. I think that we are beyond trying to trick people with marketing. We're beyond trying to be perceived as good. I think you need to be, whatever you are, you need to be that. And Yuhiyo can teach us a lot about authenticity. He's as fake as you can get if you look at his wigs and makeup and everything, but he's hardcore authentic in his being and what he's doing. And we see that brands that can live up to that, they are extremely powerful. Um, we're also going to hear from Payogen Persson, a uh, partner of Nordzone, of heavy metal management, when one of his theses is, fuck having customers, get fans, uh, and see how the heavy metal and hard rock movement have completely authentically built fan bases that last for ages. And he also advocates that we need to have much more rock and roll. Uh, we shouldn't go from good to great, we should go from good to badass, and we need to think epically, eternally, and we need to be storytellers of something really, really interesting. Otherwise, we should do something else. So what we did, we invited a lot of epic storytellers. We have uh, Spencer Kelly, the BBC Click TV show and presenter. We have Riz Khan, co-founder of Al Jazeera English. And we have a lot of other, uh, other people. We have Skav Land that many of you know well. And what we're trying to do in our little way is to strengthen the ecosystem that we have here and enable you to do more things with each other. Because I'm getting a little bit worried because we travel around the world and try to find interesting entrepreneurial companies and people. And we see they all come from very few places. So what if it's true that innovation can't come from anywhere? It's just a pipe dream. We don't have any Portuguese internet giants. Uh, we don't have any, any Afghanistani ABBA in the music scene or the best hard rock band in the world from Angola. What if it's so sad that innovation only comes from a few places with very strong ecosystems of talented people working together? If that is true, and I actually think it is. There is no coincidence that a Spotify and a Skype and a Trade Doubler and a whatever the companies are called comes from this region. It's because we here are sharing ideas, helping each other, and becoming a hotspot that attracts a lot of interesting attention. So I think it's very much up to us to fuel that. And I think that a lot of the corporations need to rethink the way they look at entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship. They need to open their doors, they need to empower and support new things, because these new things will happen, maybe somewhere else, and then it's going to be still very cold and dark here, but we might not have all the interesting companies. So I think that another take that we'll have, and a message I want to send to the larger corporations, you need to come in and become co-entrepreneurs, and you need to come in and engage with uh, external innovators in a different way than before, especially if we all want the future to be back on track. So with that, 